specialization in global business and innovation. Welcome to the last digital business module, section 3. The topics to learn in this section are Red and Blue Oceans, The Innovator's DNA, Creative Thinking Methods, The Canvas Method. In the year 2004, Professors Chen Kin and Rene Moborong came up with a book called Blue Ocean Strategy. The theory continued evolving and in 2015 the second expanded edition was published. The whole idea was to be able to pass over the competitors, but not in the traditional way of taking a bigger market share, but making companies more competitive than ever. Value innovation is the goal. The theory shows with practical examples how to create new market spaces, and more important than the analysis, the authors also provide a structured process of how to do it. The metaphor of blue and red oceans illustrates the whole market universe. Red oceans are all the industries today, and blue ones are the not yet existent. The red oceans concept is needed to understand the disrupted ideas. The regular markets of any given industry, for example furniture, house appliances, phones, entertainment and so on, are already existing markets. In existing markets, there are some competitors that compete for market share among a given number of customers that have certain needs. For example, fast food businesses, pizzas, hot dogs and hamburgers change, compete for the consumers. Or in traditional circuses, there are several companies with performers and trained animals that move from city to city, offering almost the same kind of show to families with kids. Given those conditions, there is a fierce competition that we will call the Red Oceans full of blood. Companies differentiate themselves in cost or quality. If you raise quality, then you will raise cost. And at the same time, if you reduce costs, trying to differentiate from the competitors, then quality will be diminished. The authors mention four steps to get rid of the trade-off. They apply for an industry, company or product. First, ask the question which factors must be raised in terms of product, pricing or service standards. Second, eliminate the possible areas to reduce costs and to create an entirely new market. Third, reduce the areas that are not entirely necessary, but play a significant role, reducing without eliminating. Fourth, create innovative products or services, entirely new, to create their own market through differentiation from the competition. Always remember that blue oceans are created, not given, since they represent all the industries not in existence today. When creating a blue ocean, the authors mention four principles. Reconstruct market boundaries to create an uncontested market space. Focus on the big picture. Go beyond existing and traditional demand and supply, looking for it in new market spaces. Get the right strategic sequence. In this module, we will learn different brainstorming techniques that will facilitate the process to go beyond the existing demand and supply sources in the current market. As always, the core of the business is the customer, so the three steps to create blue oceans have this center. First, examine the industry customer needs, served or not. Second, study the current and potential customers. Third, structure your own offering. When a company creates a new ocean as a first move, the company gets a lot of clients and profits. With time, there will come competitors and the ocean will change into a red one, even though the reputation and brand equity remain. Innovative processes are continuous and demand innovators' capabilities, especially in digital business nowadays. The second theory in this module is the innovator's DNA. The result is possible after eight years of collaborative investigation. Professors Dyer, Gregerson and Christensen in 2009 published a book in which they identified repetitive or common behaviors of top leaders in digital and technological industries such as Amazon, Apple, Google, Tesla 
among many hundreds of other leaders. They found common factors among disruptive ideas that marked an innovation with high impact level in the industries. The basic idea is that individuals can generate important changes in the environment. There are five skills that every person who wants to generate disruptive innovation should master. Associating, questioning, observing, networking, and experimenting. The set of skills are not only important in today's digital business contest, but also as a personal and professional added value. In order to further study these, watch carefully the set of videos added in your learning path. All these skills are closely related to innovation, entrepreneurship, and creativity. Creativity can be trained and developed by professionals. It is not one natural skill that is set for any individual. On the contrary, we can see it as a muscle to be trained. Creative thinking is closely related with five skills of the innovator's DNA, and we will understand some basic and powerful tools before we will delve into the Canvas method. The first one is brainstorming. This is used in groups where all members face the same situation, problem or issue. The main requirement for a successful brainstorming session is to suspend judgment. This means that if a participant says something that we do not agree with or see logical, we will avoid saying no or imply rejection. On the contrary, we will generate ideas to complement and build on the previous opinions. The amount of information managed in a brainstorming session is usually complex to handle, so there are different ways to do so. In the mind map, there is a center around which all other concepts are related. Thinking hats are some of the most practical and fun ways to develop creative thinking and organize a brainstorming session from different perspectives. Each hat represents a diverse point of view. When using a hat, the group will focus on that aspect only. The white hat is for facts and information, so the group will keep the discussion without opinions. The red hat is for emotions, feelings and intuition. This is the moment to express from stakeholders' perspective and your own. The black hat is for what is wrong and right. The moment to express judgment, legality and moral points of view. The yellow hat is for the positive aspect of the topic, optimism, benefits and good vibes. The green hat is for the opportunities that the topic could bring. The blue hat is the last step. Here we conclude, decide action plans and next steps. Mood boards, also known as inspiration boards, contain a collection of images, fonts, icons and colors that represent a set of information of the brainstorming session. The canvas model is very similar to a mood board as each section contains a specific theme. The Canvas business model was created by Professor Alexander Osterwalder in 2008. Since then, this model has been used widely because it implies the process of creating a business plan idea. For digital businesses, the Canvas model clarifies, speeds up and helps keep the focus on the essential elements. It values proposition, customers, channels, relationships, partnerships, activities, resources, costs, and revenues. It proposes that creating a business plan essentially becomes filling out nine boxes of assumptions on a single piece of paper. The Canvas business model has this simple presentation in one page. It works as an executive summary for investors and clarifies basic concepts in order to be able to write the usual long document for a business plan. This is the exercise for you to develop in this module. The first part of the canvas contains key partners, key activities and key resources. First, key partners. In this section, the goal is to identify key partners and suppliers, have clarity about all the diverse resources that you are acquiring from them and the activities that they perform for you. Second, key activities. Here we must bear in mind the value proposition. According to that value, we should identify what are the key activities, distribution channels, and customer relationships required to generate the value. 
Third, key resources. They are identified according to the key activities. We need to identify what are the indispensable resources. The next part of the model contains customer segment, value proposition, customer relationships, and channels. First, customer segment. For whom are you creating value? Which segments are more important? Second, value proposition. To build this section, it is necessary to identify which is the value given by your company to the customer. This means, what customer problems are you solving? Which of their needs are you fulfilling? Are there different products for each segment? Third, customer relationships. What kind of relationship is each segment expecting? Are those relationships established? How to maintain them? Fourth, channels. They are identified according to the segment wishes. How each segment wants to be reached. What channels are working? How are they integrated? The last part of the canvas contains the financial aspect of the business model cost structure and revenue stream. First, cost structure. Identify the key resources and activities that imply more investment and are the most expensive. In this business model, what are the most important costs that you will have to handle? Second, revenue stream. Identify which is the added value that your customers are willing to pay more for. At the present moment, what are they paying for? How are they paying? How will each segment prefer to pay? For all sections, have created thinking sessions. Address the steps in order and go back and complete to have internal coherency in the business model that you are developing with the Canvas methodology. Universidad Santo Tomás, institución vigilada por el Ministerio de Educación Nacional.